Hey guys, welcome back to some more Banjo Kazooie. Wanna go to the swamp? No. You don't want some swamp ass? You don't want the swamp ass? We already got enough of that in uh, Sly Cooper, but uh, we're gonna get a little bit more in this game. I was gonna say, can we, uh, can we just end this recording and go play Sly at this point? <laughs> oh, this sleeps on a pile of treasure. That one doesn't sound that bad, it just sounds like she screws my duck. Yeah. And then you get dirty on these competitions, and then we're back to square one. And uh, she's... I bet she she never wiped, did she? Polishing her crystal ball. I mean, that's somewhat fitting for a witch. Somewhat. Grant, I'm just kind of glad it wasn't something really freaking disgusting. Yeah, it's like, she polishes her boils. Like, yeah, okay, I would expect this. Oh, God. Hang on, we got round two, so we might find out something worse. Yeah, looking flicking's worse. Looking flicking, oh Jeez. Fat hag high. I guess no skinny hags allowed. I almost read that as something else. And I'm so sorry, but I, I hope I didn't, it didn't come out in recording that way. <laughs> I was reading that and I was like, oh, did you say the other word? I don't want you to say... Oh, lordy. <laughs> hey, Lester, in, in editing, if I did, can you please... I didn't hear anything. You're fine. I just... I don't even want to know the context. Well, I'll just put it this way. Um, letters getting mixed up oh, for the word fat hag high. Yeah, that that's not good. I think I know what you're thinking and yet, no. I, I thought I read it as, you know, that. <laughs> My bad. How dare you, Matthew? So you just go ahead and take care of this out of the way? Well, yeah, I, I might as well now, because the problem we have with this area is more or less that one piece of ice. You can only break that with Kazooie, but you need to have the transformation for this next world to actually get in that little crawl space. So I'd rather just get this out of the way now, because we have Wonder Wing and we have a lot of health. I mean, it's a good thing we have a lot of health, because we're almost dead. Dun, 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 dun. And I got three more. <laughs> Bubble Gloop Swamp. I really like the aesthetic of this level. I just hate the water. Yeah, I've already seen why, just on the way in. Oh, gee, I wonder where that new move is. <laughs> it's right behind the entrance. I didn't even try with this one. It's like, here, just get the boots. You're not going to use these much. It's like, a handful of occasions, you'll need them. It gets worse in Tui. They're like barely using that game. Outside of the first world, I can't think of a single instance you use them. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. They never try at all with the moves in this world. It's like, here, just stick them in the beginning. You got it. All right, good. Now just play the rest. <laughs> because I think you'll need those boots like coming up. Well, for the most part in this world in general, if you want to get through safely. There's a lot of areas where they put the waiting boots. Croctus Loctus. Yeah, this is your big quest for this world that's all over the place, so this is definitely going to make you run back and forth all the time, Bubble Gloop. I think that was the one jiggy I forgot about because I forgot you had to go back. Yeah, th they're also a case where if you die, those crocs will reset their pattern, so you have to start from the very beginning. Alright, so we got a time puzzle here. We gotta go get to that jiggy in like 30 seconds. Yeah, well actually 45, so it's actually a little more forgiving. I mean, it's more than enough time for me to go ahead and do a couple other things on the way. Like get this crack. Timer still goes in cutscenes, by the way, so you gotta be careful of that. And this goes for every case of a timer in the game. Which I found really dumb. Yeah. I think they do fix this for the sequel, which is in the first game. There's a lot of weird things like this that are kind of a nuisance to go back to. 
Yeah, see, so more than enough time, even when you're going out of your way for other stuff, still more enough to get the jiggy. It's just really punishing when you fall, and then have to climb all the way back up. Which is why, you know, you do that move that I mentioned, um, two episodes ago. Yeah. Well, even then, still, like, it, you can just easily fall by accident, because the further you go in that top section, the more skinny those platforms are. They can just slide off and just take a bonk. I love the waiting boots music. <laughs> I guess it's really good. I just wish the boots had more of a purpose. This is the best world for them since you learn it here. You use them all the time in this world. I almost thought you didn't. You messed that up or something. I mean, it didn't really matter for the life. Don't really need the life. You can't really mess up breaking the egg. Another one, Banjo? Jeez. This world is one of the better ones you start noticing. That health just sitting around really does help. You probably take a lot of unnecessary damage by touching the water. Yeah, I always use um, invincibility for uh, feathers for these guys. Yeah, same here. It's a lot easier to deal with. And plus, using Wonder Wing will take it out. Pretty much instantly, because using your other attacks, I think it's like two hits to kill him. Ah, sensory overload with the music. I mean, it goes away after a little bit, but they still like to cram music in music. Kim does it a lot. Yo, dog, I, th I heard you like music, and so I put music in your music and your music and your music. It made it just a freaking jumbled mess. Yeah, nowadays, we just call that dubstep. God, boo! Yeah, that's what you get for T-posing. <laughs> the grunty switch is uh, back. And getting that one jiggy that's in, inside the giant statue in the middle of that room. Yeah. We'll be figuring how to get over to that, that, uh, Jay really soon. Yeah. They're noticing the more we shoot down these crocs, the faster they go every time they warp around. The last one's gonna be opening and shutting his mouth so fast, it's really hard to time it. All we had to do is destroy a, a bunch of mud, mud, uh, huts that we were rewarded for our efforts. Yeah. That's a good thing I apparently have iframes after I fall, because that water would have hurt otherwise. That's normally not supposed to happen. Normally it's supposed to, as soon as you fall in the water, you, you take damage, but the game's a little more forgiving if you fall and take fall damage. <laughs> now, what is this crocodile's name? Uh, I never really remember, but we'll actually meet the guy inside here soon, so we'll find out. I was going to say, uh... When you go inside, it's like, wait a second, isn't the other guy kind of small? Yeah. Well, that thing's just a statue, basically, of him. You know, it's a completely different color. Hey, I'm trying to get on my boots here. Chief. Because these boots weren't made for working. They're made for the frogs to jump on your head. Wait, that's not how the song goes. <laughs> These poles are put in a very convenient place. Otherwise, it'd be a lot more difficult to get back without taking damage. We'll be back on this side of the map later, because as you can tell, my pattern when I play this is I go wherever the crocs lead me, and then just come back later on after I do this, because this quest just flips you all over the world. A little disjointed, if you want to be honest. Yeah. Also, I don't know why, sometimes when I play, this guy doesn't talk, but he asks you, hey, could you help my feet? They're freezing, and I can't feel them, so I can't pull them back in. So, uh, does that have to beat him senseless so his uh, freezing feet will go back into his shell? <laughs> I'll put the feeling back. <laughs> yeah, Croc is like, yang, 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 yang. Yeah, see, way harder the time. You basically want to shoot the moment he's ready to open. Nice floating honeycomb piece. Uh, 
it's apple. How oh, that count is hitting the foot? It hit the floor. <laughs> Have golden nacho piece. Oh, why are there bite marks on it? Yeah, that was candy. Don't ask. That is actually a joke they do in the sequel, because there are a bunch of cavemen who need food, and when you give them all the food and warm them up, they give you a jiggy, but there's a bunch of teeth marks on it, because they thought it was candy. So now I gotta pay some attention to the Mr. Teach dude. Quiet, please. We're teaching here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, uh, it, what was that? That was not a concert. No. Are you gonna see, are you gonna see the speed this portion up? Oh no, this is really that bad. Basically, this whole section is just a little timing game. So, you have to just kind of memorize what they do. You know, basically Simon says, reenact the order. You fail it, you have to start again. And they do take some health every time you fail. I recommend just writing the pattern down, because it's always different. So just write it down as you're watching. Make it a little bit easier. And then sometimes they just don't activate when you're ground pound. I don't understand this. I get right on top of the turtle. You smack Kazooie on top of them. And uh, they don't even flinch. Luckily, that didn't count as failing. You'd think it would. The last lesson, more turtles get involved, but uh, not really that much worse. Fun fact about this, uh, if you play Diddy Kong Racing, all these turtles may look familiar, because this is basically Tip Top. I was going to say, what do you call him? Tup Tup the Tupperware. <laughs> Tup Tup. My favorite racer. <laughs> All the characters that were featured in Diddy Kong Racing were supposed to get their own gains, but really the only two that actually did was Banjo and Conker. The rest of them either didn't get into a game or were just cameos like this. Like, oh, it looks shiny. Uh, just excuse me, sir. I'm just gonna jump on your forehead real quick and grab this. Thank you. <laughs> Gimme. I need this. Very cleverly out of camera's range, so it's really hard to notice that honeycomb. Oh, well, back over to the crackhead. Be getting inside of you soon. Just soon. Soon, my child. Soon. But first, we need to go visit a an old, uh, old uh, witch doctor. Imagine doing this one without waiting boots. Possible, but it's just not fun. It was a. Uh, I, I thought this maze was a lot harder when I was a kid. I thought it was an actual maze. I'm like, how am I supposed to get through this? Yeah, luckily it's a linear maze, so you don't have to actually do a puzzle when you're trying to get through a section with a timer. That would suck. Yeah. Speaking of things that suck, this jiggy. Don't fall. You fall, you won't get it, because they only have like 10 seconds, and it's a very narrow walkway. It will hurt if you fall down there because of the water and fall damage. It's just There's a lot of problems with this jiggy. A lot of factors. There's a lot of factors that just uh, make me go, ah, ha, ha. Yeah, just please get that on your first try. And then get back on your first try, too, if you don't want to suffer. Does everyone want to hit me out of my boots? That's the one thing about the waiting boots that was really bad in this game, is that your animation for taking them off is so slow. They do speed that up in the sequel, it's just... You, you don't notice it because you barely use them in the sequel. So, it didn't really matter. No. 
There's our second single piece. Yeah, another one is just out of view of your camera, so unless you'd look straight up, you wouldn't know it's there. I'm not your boots. Getting out of here. There's a... Uh, uh, um... There's a... Uh, who was it? There's a... The, um... God, it left my head. Oh, I hate when that does that. I, that's the second time I've done that today. Where I just forgot what I was going to say. Banjo. Crocodile. Her, 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 I agree, he's crocodile. This guy, oh man, Mr. Vile is not playing around. You're supposed to technically come back later in the game to do this jiggy, because the first attempt here, as you see in the background, we got shoes that we can't put on right now, and you're supposed to technically use those in order to make this game easier. Because rounds one and two aren't terrible, but round three gets really fast to a point where they expect you to use the speed shoes in a way. It's possible to do this without the speed shoes. I've always done it without them, but it's real tight. I, I've never done them with, with the speed shoes. I mean, I've done it before, but that's not playing the game naturally. I've actually done it from, like, the uh, the ending of the game section like sometimes you play mini games again and this is one I got and I use speed shoes for that version because that's actually harder. Uh, round one here you just have to eat all the red enemies here that's all it's on field so you eat all these the higher score wins and uh, interesting fact about this I didn't know until this session is that uh, if you eat 30 of these guys you get an extra life. Oh I didn't know that. Or around 30 or so. But I do get an extra life in this. Yeah, it's 35. What a weird number for a life. You are off by five. Give me a break. <laughs> you only win easy game. Oh, what are you talking about, uh, Vile? I destroyed you. Yeah, you didn't get the extra life. I got the extra life. So now basically the same verse as the first. Eat the red guys, the one with the highest score wins. But now we got these yellow creatures. Can't eat those. They're apparently poisonous. Eat those, you just get stunned for a second. Worst part about this is Vile cheats. His AI is a little too smart and he immediately goes where a new one of these enemies spawn to eat. And uh, that works for if he can't see them yet. Like if it's off camera, he'll still go over there. This game is easier than the 360 simply because of widescreen. You're still whooping him, though. I mean, the best part is, is just my spawns have been pretty okay. You kind of want to make your way over to one of these creatures immediately as soon as you see one of them spawn. So as long as you stay in front of Vile, you should be okay. Sometimes, like, yeah, you know, you can get the ones on the left, I'll get the ones on the right. And sometimes the ones on the right, there's like five there. You get three. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you won the second game. Yeah, now for the last one. The hardest one out of the three. Now this one, you interchange things depending on what's on top of the screen. So sometimes you eat red guys and sometimes you eat yellow guys. Now for this version of the game, it changes every ten seconds. There's a harder variant of this where it changes every five. Now I hit the yellow yumblies. Yeah, it's just best to kind of know the timing thing at this point. So know if it changes every 10 seconds, and you can do stuff like that where you're eating one of them at the buzzer. Because normally, uh, if you eat that thing when it's not on screen, you're stunned. And that's a problem. Yeah. You can say that. If you get stunned even like once in this game, Vile has a very good chance of beating you. This game in particular, like this version of it, this is the whole reason why it's kind of more recommended to come back here later on with the speed juice, but again, it's just barely possible. It's hard, but it is a possibility. I thought we're going to be cutting it close here. Golly. Yeah, win by one. Thread the needle. If you tie, it counts as a loss and he bites you. <laughs> That's not right. Now he has a harder challenge. 
It's the same thing, but now you don't get a reward for it in terms of jiggies. You get three extra lives. But if you lose, he takes a life from you every time. There's no point in doing it because the counter resets after you turn the game off. Not just that, but there are faster ways to grind lives than this. And safer ways. Without, you know, gorging ourselves on food. Not a scaredy cat, I just know better. I have common sense. I hope you like crunching. This is actually a little bit faster than walking normally. Oh, really? Just to do that? That's why I do it. <laughs> Although, out of all the transformations in this game, this is the only one that can attack. So it's the only one that can defend itself. Camera, please. And that's your last, uh, Jinjo in this place. Hey, camera, please. Cooperate with me, camera. I don't have time for your nonsense. This one gets stuck on the wall so much. This area is really bad for the camera. Even if you zoom it in all the way, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's it. That's the long walk out of here. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is the beginning of, uh... What is, um, uh, it's gonna be longer videos because each video, each video now has a really kind of a difficult dungeon that has a, oh, uh, dungeon on my level. Yeah, let's see, uh, Ban Banjo Kazooie and Zelda. I mean, there's plenty of mods of those. Sorry, I meant to say the world. This is where the levels are starting to get a little bit longer because there's a lot more stuff to do. Everything's spread out, there's more enemies to deal with, and all that other junk. Yeah. So, I expect the longer parts from now on. Yeah, because at this point, we got a lot more stuff we can do.